Welcome to the sew along for the sailor tote. Now this, if you've bought the pattern, this is the one in the pattern. It's called the sailor tote because it's shaped like a front of a ship. So you get this is the one in the pattern. Um, this is the one in the sew along for today. So let's just run through a few features. So it has this pleated pocket on the front. So that when you pop things in, it does expand. Nice and roomy. That's the back view. Lovely accents on the side. Optional bag feet. I've used them on this one because of the faux leather. And we have a zipper closure. And inside, standard inside, zipper pocket and a slip pocket. Now I'm hoping you'll find this super easy to do. If you have any questions at all, either find the Facebook group which is underneath the video here. Pop a comment underneath or if you've bought the pattern, you'll find my email and you can send me a message there. But um, do pop over to the Facebook because I have, there will be a lot of testers to look through there for inspiration. But there we are, there's the two together. So let's get sewing this one. Now I've used foam for mine today because it does give good structure, but you can use fleece if you want. When it gets to sewing in the tunnel, do give it a go. Give it a try. If you're not confident, don't worry, just leave that one out. It will be fine without it. There you go. So let's get straight into the bag and as always we start as we need to go on with the strap. Get it done, get it out of the way. So first things first, we need to make these ends neat. To do that we are going to measure and mark one inch up from the short raw edge. If your fabric allows, so if you're using cotton linen, you can just fold this up, the raw edge up to meet the line and give it a good press. I'm using faux leather, so I could use double-sided tape or a bit of glue. My machine doesn't like either, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some strap ends at a later date, because obviously I need to purchase them. <laughs> so if you were doing yours, you would have these folded up, lovely jubbly. Give them a press. Next, we need to find the long centre line. To do that, again, cotton and linen or fabric that presses, you could fold this in half long ways and give it a good press to find the centre line. So you'd have a nice fold line to be your centre line. But again, I am going to measure mine and draw a line I'm going to run a little bit of tape, but we'll try not to go close to the 
where the stitch lines will be. So if I stitch close to the edges, So if you've used cotton and linen, grab yourself a biscuit while I do this a sec. So for both fabrics now, you need to bring in your long raw edge to meet your centre line, whether it's a folded centre line or a drawn one. I don't know if you can hear next door's dog. I think it's a squirrel. I taped my long raw edges to my centre line. If you press them, lovely jubbly. Next, you're going to fold them in half again to make your strap and give them another press. Give it a really good steamy press if your fabric allows. I'm going to run some more tape down mine. So once you've um, pressed yours, you can go ahead and top stitch I'm just gonna I know I've got a rolling pin I just want to make sure that my seams are nice and flat So I'm going to top stitch around all four edges. I'm not worried about these raw edges because I'm going to add some strap ends at a later date. But yes, if it was you and you've got nice folded edges, top stitch all around all four. So you've got your strap and pick a side that to be your wrong side. So obviously mine's both the same. I've got no print. I'm just going to pick this one and measure down four inches. Now because I haven't folded mine and I want to give it a little bit extra for um the strap end i'm just gonna add a bit onto mine so you will measure down four inches i'm using washi tape because i don't like to mark on areas i can i can see so I'll give that a clip there so yours fold won't be as big as mine because I want to add the end so to secure yours you could sew a box with a an X in it to make it really secure or you can add a rivet now I know I've been quite daring with the blue thread but I don't trust myself to sew a perfect box on video. So 
So I'm going to add a rivet, but let's just do the other side. Make sure that your fold is on the same edge, same side. So measure down your four inches. Nearly marked it. Get over there, Penny, I don't want you. Let's reuse this bit. Slide on your snap hook and fold your end to the marker. Make sure that they are both folded the same direction. And again, if you want to, you can sew a box or you can add a rivet. So I'm going to add a rivet. My rivet press is huge. I can't get it on camera, but I will try and get a video at a later date for the rivets. But there are many, many online that are really good. Down mine, I've added two in for strength. And notice how they're both the same, folded the same direction. So pop this to the side for later on. So let's do the front first. I've got all my pieces here just to show you what what is what. I have my front upper piece, outer front upper, outer front lower. I have my, let's put them up there a minute. I have my two pleated pocket pieces. The inside is meant to be slightly taller than the outside, so don't worry. It's because the outer one's going to have a accent strip on it. So accent strips and those bits can go over there for now. We're just going to do the pocket to start with. I find the easiest way to measure is using my cutting mat, which is filthy. So we're going to mark the pleats first. I think, I think, I know, what we need to do is mark in four inches from the outside of the short side edges. I'm going to use a pin. <clears throat> but you can use a fabric marker. In, within the seam allowance, if you wish. I'm hoping you can't hear what's going on outside. We've got digging up the road. It's so noisy. So I'm also going to do it from the other short side. One, two, three, four. Don't worry which way round your fabric is at the minute. But what I need to do is at the marks we've made, I'm going to fold the fabric back on itself. Make sure that it lines up with the edges so it's not wonky donkey. And I'm uh, going to give this a press. I'm also going to do the same with this side. So at the pins, I'm going to fold it back. So I flip it over. I'm going to press both of those now and then I'll come back. So 
press these in place and I'm going to keep the folds nicely by top stitching down both of the folds. Don't worry about having to unfold it because the pieces don't go anywhere near each other. So, top stitch them both. Now that I've top stitched them, I can unfold the fabric because from the short sides, I now need to measure in two inches. Obviously, if you are using centimeters, just to check your pattern for the measurements. So top and bottom, two inches in from both sides. Starting on the left, I'm going to bring my left folded edge to meet the marks. So if you've used fabric marker, um, meet to the marker. I'm just going to clip these in place. I'm just using clips because they're quicker. So right side to meet the right marks. And give all that a really good press. I'm giving it a really good steam press and to keep the folds in place while we construct the front. I'm just going to base stitch them within the seam allowance. So base stitched, everything's in place. I'm going to do the same for my pleated pocket lining. But first I just need to change my bobbing colour. So I'll cut back once I've done the same to this one as I did with the front. So now that both pieces are done, you will find that they might be ever so slightly different widths. The pattern is a quarter of an inch wider to account for any, you know, to give you a little bit of leeway. But don't worry, because once we've made the front all together, we'll trim off any excess. Just, just give you a little bit of wiggle room, that's all. So I'm going to take one of my accent strips. And you'll see there, mine is ever so slightly wider. Don't panic. And I'm going to flip it so it's right side to my pocket. Now, I, mine isn't any, any way directional. But do I like it? I think I like it that way, actually. So I'm going to take my strip, right side to the top of the fabric. If your pleated pocket is slightly bigger, centre it. So we're going to sew these together using seam allowance. There you go. I have sewn them together using seam allowance. I'm going to take this strip and I'm going to press it upwards. Depending on the fabric you've used, you might be able to press this with an iron, but 
I can't and mine won't finger press it just loops I'm gonna have to just hold it over whilst I top stitch it in place top stitched I've used a blue so that you can actually see what I've done Next we need to join these pieces together and we're going to do that with our zipper but I haven't cut it to size so I'm just going to trim mine really quick. There we go, I've trimmed my zipper. I'm just going to pop a clip on the end to stop the zip coming off. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to put some stitches on. Normally the clip works fine, but this zipper is quite chunky. So the clip wasn't quite doing it. So I've got my pull all the way to the end on the left side. Now I'm going to flip this over so it's facing downwards and lay it on top of my pocket. The tape is going to match the top edge of my accent strip. The right side, the closed end of the tape is matching up with the edge of my accent strip not the pleated pocket but don't worry if it does no biggie the reason for this little overhang is i just find you get much neater lines if you don't have to keep opening and closing your zipper all the time and fluffing around with feet I'm going to base stitch these together within the seam allowance. Right, so that is not going anywhere. I have my lining piece now. Make sure if you're using directional that it is the right way up. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to match the top edge to the top edge of the, the edge of the tape. And I'm going to sew these together using a regular seam allowance. If you have used a number three zip, use a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you've basted them, you can open these up, press if needed, or if your fabric allows, so that is now my front and that is the back. Top stitch across the top. To hold this fold in place. So 
So I top stitched it in place. Should have changed my bobbin thread, but I didn't. Somehow I've cut my thread there. So I'm just going to put a few stitches over there. There we go. Nobody will ever know unless you tell them. That's the bottom part of the front done. Or well, the lower part, I should say. Don't worry about all this being open because we might need to trim it off later. I have my outer front upper piece and my remaining accent strip. So right sides together, matching up the at the bottom edge. Um, sew together using seam allowance. Once you've stitched them together, you can push down your accent strip with all the seams facing downwards. And you can press if your fabric allows it. Or you can hold it as I have to do and top stitch. Right. Take your lower piece and your upper piece and you're going to Flip this over and lay them on top right sides together, matching up the right edges with the tape. And making sure the edge of your accent strip is matched up to the edge of the zipper tape. So we need to base stitch these together within the seam allowance. Here is a bit that caught everyone out. Don't forget about your uh, outer, front, lower. I need to remember the names of all these pieces. Because your pocket will be no good if you don't have this. So take your everything that you've just sewn together and lay it on top the top edge needs to match up with the top edge of your zipper tape again and sew them together using seam allowance this time. Now we will have a usable pocket. So take your outer front upper piece and push it upwards. Only this piece to go upwards. Everything else, so three layers at the bottom, needs to be facing down. Seams, however, face upwards. This needs to go upwards. 
and top stitch it in place. Press first if you can. So before you go any further, check. So I'm going to open my zip and check. Have you got a pocket, a usable pocket, inside, inside pieces? If you open that and you see the desk, you're missing a part. Ask my testers. <laughs> no. So I'm going to close that again. And I'm going to take my outer back pattern piece. Matching up the curves at the top. I'm going to trim away any of this, these bits of pocket that you can see here. The excess is there for those that are using a number three zipper. So if you have used a number three, you find that you won't need to trim off as much. Hopefully it won't be too short, but you won't need to trim off as much. So once you've trimmed it to shape, not trimming the zipper, not yet. Hold your horses on that one. Just need to make sure that the pocket doesn't go astray. I'm going to baste these three layers together. If you want to, you can baste the sides as well, but I'm just going to baste the bottom. And there we go, basted together. The reason I'm not chiving off the zip yet is because I don't want the sides to move in any way. I mean, it shouldn't. Now it's all basted, but just to check. So I'm gonna take my shorter side piece remove any fluff and I'm going to lay it right side together to the front panel matching up one of the long edges with the left side they should match so you know if you've got the right one pop a couple of clips in the top and bottom now I've got them secure, so nothing's going to move up or down. I'm now going to open my zip about halfway. I need to be careful sewing over my zipper because these teeth, although they're not metal, they will probably break my needle. But I'm going to sew these together using a seam allowance. Now you've done that, it's okay to trim some of the zipper tape. I'm going to leave a little bit, just because. So open your short side outwards. Now, if you have fabric that will press and will keep the press, do that. There are also instructions in the pattern that say if you're using faux leather, cork or fabric that won't press, you're gonna to have to do two rows of top stitching. So one now, one later, rather than just the one later. So I'm going to do my first one now to keep this in place, otherwise it's going to cause me mayhem later. So 
first row of top stitching or no top stitching if you've used say linen I purposely use difficult fabric in the videos honestly just so that I can show you the options because if I used all the easy fabric and you wanted faux leather you'd wonder what to do see there's a method in my madness so I'm going to take my tall side piece now right side together matching the long edge of the side piece to the far right edge of the front panel and they should match up nicely which they do So I'm going to do the same again. Seam allowance, open this up, give it a press. If you can't give it a press, give it a top stitch. One thing I should have mentioned probably three steps ago is that we're doing this with all our seams pointing towards the side pieces. Obviously this is in your pattern so I hope you've read the pattern before chopping away and sewing. So I have my front piece there. Now I just need to add the back. So again, there's a theme going on here. Right sides together, long edge, long edge to the tall side. It's the edges that match. We're doing it this side rather than this side because when we sew in the tunnel, we want to show in the tunnel for the shortest time which is that side so again sew together regular seam allowance press it open with the seams facing nearly out you then with the seams facing the sides if you can't press it, top stitch it. So I move my machine out of the way. So I have my outer all the bits sewn together, all the seams are facing the side pieces. If you've used linen, cotton, you will have just pressed them in place. But I've had to top stitch mine in place. Now what you need to do is lay this on top of your foam pin, clip, whatever you need to do to the foam, trim around it and base stitch it to the foam within the seam allowance. Once I've done that, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Right, so I'm back. I have added my panel, we'll call it, to the foam. I'm hoping you can see all of this in here. So now I just need to flip it over and trim away the foam from the seams. So I'm just lifting it up with my one hand and I don't know what's on my scissors, but I'm going to trim away the foam with this hand. There you go. 
so I've trimmed away the bulk of the foam from the seams now what I need to do is top stitch the seams from earlier this is because due to the shape of the bag the foam likes to collapse into the bag because it's not attached to anything so this helps everything stay together so if you'd used cotton or linen you can now go ahead and do your top stitching if you've used faux leather cork etc then you're going to do a second row of top stitching inside the first or outside the first you know what I mean you know what I mean I'll do it and then I'll show you the second row just to the side of the first row using the first row as your guide I just need to roll mine up carefully to get it under the arm of my machine There we go. All top stitch. I'm not worried about this little bubble here because when the bag is that way, it'll all work itself out. I'm not too worried. Oh. So, if you had followed the instructions in step one. Let me just find my ruler. Hang on. You would have measured and marked the top and bottom centres of both your short and tall sides. Obviously, being me, I didn't. But that's okay, because I'm going to show you what to do if you didn't follow the instructions like me. So, tall sides easy. On the bottom, within the seam allowance, just find your centre at the bottom by measuring and marking. I'm doing this on the right side. So if you had followed instructions, you would have it on the wrong side. All you need to do is just transfer it over. I'm going to flip this over, Oop. knock everything out of the way, and I'm going to measure on the wrong side this time. I'm just using my quilting ruler and the inch markers to find the centre. Now, with the small side, you need to account for the fact that you're going to have a seam allowance down here. So within the, within the edge seam allowance, I'm just going to draw, so within the bottom line, I'm drawing the side seam allowance. So, laying my quilting ruler and I'm measuring in the seam one out from the sides and I count that side I hope that's not been a higgledy jiggledy jargon for you but I've measured in the seam allowance and I've marked it within these seam allowances now when I measure the centre now, 
I'm using this marker as my edge. So I'm measuring on the front. What a donut. Measure my seam allowance again. Although, if you just want to say, Leanne, please make that whole thing simpler for me. Measure three inches. Three inches in on this side from the fold. Five minutes of complete confusion just to tell you to measure in three inches. Oh, that's me. So, I'm just going to lay this over the side for a minute out of the way we need to do our connector straps. So I'm using these triangular rings instead of D-rings because I just like how they look. But you can use whatever you like. So to get the straps ready, yours won't be folded obviously, yet. I'm going to fold them in half long ways and give them a press. If your fabric can't do that, then you'll need to measure and mark the long centre line. Once you've got a nice fold from pressing, it only has to be a light fold. Bring your raw edges in to meet it and give it another press. Give us a really good press this time to get rid of your centre fold. Do that with both got raw edges in the center on the one side that is your wrong side next we need to top stitch down all of the long side long edges to keep the folds in place top stitched you can't really see it but I have trust me so deciding which way up your fabric is if you use non-directional don't worry but if you've managed to fussy cut yours with a nice print then make sure they're the right way up and flip them over so that your raw edges are showing now from your top side, you're going to measure down and mark three inches. You don't need to draw a line all the way across, but just make sure it's visible. You can just about see mine. One, two, three. And slide on your D-ring or triangular ring and bring the raw end to meet the mark you made and hold it in place. Same again, triangular ring, fold to meet your mark, hold it in place. Well, I move my machine because I need some space. Right, so short one for short side, long one for long, tall one for tall side. So, that bubble's going to annoy me now, but it's fine, it's fine, don't panic. Use the mark you made at the centre 
to help you position the bottom edge of your connector strap. If you want to measure this and find the centre, you can do. And uh, just do that. And hold it in place. This needs to run up the centre of your side piece. Do whatever you need to do. If you want to double sided tape up the middle, glue, pins. I'm going to be really naughty and I'm going to pin it. And I know what you're thinking. Pin into vinyl. How could you? But do you know what? You're not going to see the holes anyway. So I'm just doing this by eye. But measure it. Do what you need to do to get it centered. I'm quite happy with how that looks. Now, you're going to top stitch this in place. So you're going to go up the one end, across by the D-ring, and back down the other. And then you're going to go about a half inch towards the D-ring. I'm going to use my jellyfish tape. To mark it and I know this is probably about three quarter inches and I'm going to do that to get myself a nice straight edge I need to do the same with this one so I'm gonna center of my connector strap with the mark at the bottom rebelliously pin it in place and I'm going across I'm using this side as a guide if you want to knowing that should be about two and a half inches in so if you want to lay your ruler across your the seam and then lie this up against up against it before you pin you can do that too bit of jellyfish Really wonky jellyfish. So again with this one, I'm going to top stitch up across the bottom of the tape and back down again to secure them in place. I'm just going to measure this one to make sure it's nice and straight, which it is. Ooh. Not bad, not bad. Right. Quick gas in and stitch these in place. We go top stitched in place by jellyfish. Oh, 
all pins removed. If you feel that the fabric you've used might pull on the stitches, you can add a rivet to give it strength. But that's the reason why we have such a big fold, so that there are more stitches to secure it. Like I said, if you feel that like you need more, you can add a line, you can add a, like an extra line of stitches, you can add a rivet. But I feel okay that it looks good and it'll be fine. So the next thing to do is make a sandwich. Sorry, not the yummy scrummy kind, although I am feeling a bit hungry. We are going to carefully sandwich this over. I'm bringing the two short sides together. No, not folding it, I'm not pressing it. I'm just gently bringing the short ends together. These need to be top stitched now, not top stitched, not top stitched, sewn together using regular seam allowance. Oof. Please don't top stitch it yet. Regular seam allowance. Right, that was the easy part. Next is the totally fun part because this needs to be top stitched and to do that you need to sew in the tunnel. So with all the seams pressing the sides you have to finger press it with your cat if you can get an iron in there if your fabric's cotton give it a bash but make sure all of your seams are facing the side, the short side. And this is where my beautiful top stitching goes awry. I'm going to put this on the machine and then I'll move the camera so that you can see what I'm going to do. But I'm starting at the bottom. Let me just do a, a stitch to make sure it doesn't move. Right. I am going to sew in here. So depending on your fabric, you might be able to, oh hang on, sorry, one-handed doing this, it's like a dodgy horror film now, fold this back a little bit. This is why I say fleece is a bit easier, but do what you can to top stitch. It's only a short side, it's only a one side. But if you've used faux leather, you might end up having to do two rows of stitching. You don't have to. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. Feel free to leave it. I'm going to cut here because there's no point in you... Well, you can't really see anything. And there might be some cussing. So I'm going to cut here and I'll come back and hopefully I would have done two rows of stitching. Woo! So I'm not even sure how I managed it myself. But two rows of top stitching done in the tunnel on faux leather. It can be done. Honestly, just take your time. Go slowly. I had to fold down the top half of my bag to do it. 
obviously if you're using cork just go careful with how you fold it but it is done so I just wanted to show you that I'm going to turn it back around now Turn it back round, so you can see there's my seam, nice and secure. I'll pop this to the side a second, because we need to do the base. So I've got my base piece, my foam, and my stabiliser. This doesn't look like much, but it just adds a bit of something you can use whatever you like really I'm just going to centre mine like so and top stitch it in place don't worry about it being perfectly centred because you've got enough leeway all the way around the outsides so I put my outer base right side down with the base piece on the top side. I'm just going to pop them together. And clip them together. miss those right. before I base stitch them together I just want to remove some bulk from the corners chop off a good size like a good thumb size corner piece obviously don't use your thumb as a guide please don't chop it off as a visual aid, a thumb sized chunk. The more the better. Now you can base stitch these together within the seam allowance. Then trim away any foam from the seam allowance. If you are using feet, I've got these ones here that have like a split pin on them. We're just going to make some marks as a guide. So if you are using the ones that are like Chicago screws, this mark is just going to be a guide. So I'm going one inch in from the long side, one and a half inch from the short side, and I'm just making a mark. One inch, one and a half. So I've not I've not used Chicago screws before, so I don't know how they how you would cut them. But I'm gonna use my washer to mark 
So I'm using my mark I made. I'm actually going to put it on the left prong. I've got it in the hole of the left prong. I'm just going to draw these on. I think I know where they go, so... Put those to the side though because I'm not adding them yet. I don't like constructing a bag with feet in the bag already. Especially when you've got to turn it through the pockets and all sorts. And... Lippity jibbity in all around. I'm just cutting out my prong holes. However, your Chicago screw is attached to your base. If you need to, well, obviously you do need to cut out holes. Cutting them out now. So they are ready. And hopefully, it will go through the um, bag base as well, which it has. On the wrong side, we need to do lots of markings, lots and lots of markings. First off, I'm going to measure the centres of all the sides and mark them. I'm just using my quilting ruler. You can use your cutting mat. And so that's five is the centre. Next, we also need to mark the seam allowance on all sides. Now my quilting ruler has the marks for th the three eighths of an inch but just measure it the best you can. So I'm measuring the seam allowance for this long, this one long side but I don't need to draw all the way across. I only need to draw at the edges. The short side, just mark at the edges. So lots of marks. So I've got my centres of the long side, centres of the short side, and then I've done the seam allowance marks, but only on the edges, not all the way across, because we don't need it all the way across. It's construction time. So I'm going to get my tube of outer bag. And let's get some light in here. Oh, that one's not even on. That would help. So I've got my one with the front pocket here. And I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure across the front. Why didn't you do this earlier? Well, because it's not always accurate. You can't measure the front of the pleats because if you make a boo-boo and your pleats aren't accurate, then this won't be accurate. So we're doing it once it's completed. So I'm making a mark halfway across within the seam allowance. 
I could just about see that. I'm going to slide my base in here, so inside the bag. I've got my mark, which I really can't see. So don't do what I do. I'm using a biro. Shh. Ten, two, six. No, hang on. Sorry, moving you around. Right, so I've got my mark that I can just about see, and I'm going to slide my base inside the bag, right sides together, and I'm going to line up my long centre mark with the mark made. together like so now when you stitch them together now it's all right because when you you can kind of squash this out of the way it's fine you're only going to go from the one long side seam allowance marker to the other. Sorry, the lighting in here is not the best. So we're going to go from here to here. Just going over it. Using a regular seam allowance. So I'm doing I'm rolling the outer bag as I go. So that's the first side done. I'm just going to move you back because I can't get my head under the camera. Hang on. There we go. So the same again with the back panel. I'm going to measure across and mark the centre. I know you can't see me but that's what I'm doing. Measure and mark. Then I'm going to grab the base, put it outwards, and then kind of push it back in to. Lost me mark and now there is. There, match the markers up. There, and I'm going to sew again from one side seam marker to the other. This one is a little bit fiddlier because you can't roll the bag like you could before. But it's all good, you can do it. 
You can do it. Just smush it. It'll be fine. There we are. That's just the um, Paltex, whatever it's called, that's folded. Increase, don't panic. To help the side ease in, I'm going to make some little snippety snips. So on the marks we made, I'm going to cut them. Not all the way up to the stitches. Just enough to help the fabric around, come around. So that will all fold a lot better now. Now you can just about see the mark we made on the bottom of the side so I've got my short side here and I've got the bottom center mark we made to help us with the side connector and I'm matching that up to the side center side mark on the base And again, as we did with the long side, I'm going from, I'm just going over these so you can see them. I'm going from one side marker to the other, there to there. There you go, and the same again with this side. So on the, Bottom edge of the tall side, I'm just having a little peep. I can see the marker I made, matching it up with the center of the short side. And then I'll go over it again so you can see it. I'm just sewing from the one C marker to the other. Ta da! Let's trim off the corners because we don't need those. And that is your outer complete. If you wish to add your feet now from the inside of the bag, you can. So push your prongs through. Oops, I'll pick it up. Add on a washer. Push the prongs to the outsides and then protect the base with a bit of tape. Now I've used these ginormous feet with huge prongs so I'm going to leave mine till after I've turned the bag through. But if you're using Chicago screws or smaller feet feel free to add them now. But that is the outer complete. That's the hardest bit done honestly. Hardest bit done. Yay! So we shall move on to the lining. 